Chapter Twenty Four. It kept on snowing. Outside of my window, a giant pillow fight up in the sky kept delivering feathers that billowed and swirled. Sue sat beside me, the office empty except for the two of us, everyone gone. The only light was the screen of the Mac, where we'd captured an item from Post Online with its blistering headline. Millionaire landlord busted at mansion, cat killer held. So everything's wonderful, isn't it, Sammy? Bridget gets fluffer and everyone's safe. What'll happen to Louis? She said. Do you know? I stared at the snowfall. I guess he'll be fine. I'd imagine the Beaumonts will phone up the press and say everything's settled and Louis's okay. I looked at her, shrugging. His life will be tough. There'll be cameras everywhere, dogging his trail. And he'll go to the cat shows and probably scream that his private dressing room isn't enough, and he'll win all the prizes, and win all the girls. What a terrible life, I said. Poor little kid. She looked at me quizzically. Tell me something. I'd rather be me and have you for a friend. That wasn't the question. I said, "Don't worry, that wasn't the answer." She glared at me, Sam. Go on. What's the question? It's how did you know? I mean, how did you figure that intricate plot? I said, "Maybe I didn't." What? It's a plot, but I mean, who knows if it's really what happened? And then what's the difference? The bottom line is that everyone's happy and everyone's safe, and the bad guys are punished. You add up the time for the tigers, the tortoise, the sheep, and the birds, and the rest of the cats, and the elephant too, and you're looking at centuries. Godless and Hen shall be stuck in a cage like the cats in a zoo. That's poetic justice, isn't it? Yeah. We stared at the snowfall and stood very close. But what got you started? She said. The things, and I put them together with something peculiar, something that practically slid past my ear, as Jean Claude told it. Sebastian came too, after. Hench stole Louis, and called up his dad. He said, "Pops, I found Louis, but somebody grabbed him." And Algernon screamed at him, "Get yourself home." Plus, he called him an idiot. See what I mean? Like if Louis was missing, actually missing, he would have said. Stay there and follow it up, and not call him an idiot. That's what I mean. And I'd figure that Fluffer was some kind of farm kid and easy to part with to pull off the switch. And there's one other thing, Sue. The paper reported that several cars had left tracks at the scene. Sue thought it over. I still think you're something. She started to yawn at me. Brilliant and great. She curled up beside me and looked at the snow, which was nearly hypnotic. The whirling, twirling, curling, hurling of feathery snow. I pictured the tiger who rose from the dead, repossessing his spirit, his sinew and bone, and escaped from the mansion. His eyes like lanterns that broke through the darkness and burned his way home. I pictured him free and entirely happy, alive and alone on a whitening plain, his whiskers frosted, his luminous eyes on the Asian horizon, his mate in the cave, and for only a moment, I was the tiger. I felt his anger, I felt his pride. Then I caught my reflection. A two-foot house cat in front of a window. I looked down at Sue. For a two-foot house cat, I did pretty well.
About the author. Linda Stewart has written 17 adult crime novels and film novelizations, plus television dramas and documentaries. Sam the Cat Detective, her first book for children, was inspired by her live-in cat named Sam, who generously lets her share his Manhattan apartment. The first book in the series, that now numbers three, was nominated for the Mystery Writers of America's Edgar Award. About Sam. You can read an interview with Sam himself, conducted by Ginger Peach, the feline associate editor of Catalog Magazine, if you go to Sam's website, www.samthecat.com. He welcomes questions from readers, and you can email him through his site, or write to him, care of the publisher.